Here, uh, this is the scientific evaluation of biochar and crop residues as practiced. So, there is a difference between the, the standardization of biochar. I will speak mostly on biochar. Uh, we are having several standards, but there is no common standard globally which is accepted, and many standards are evolving. That's fine. But ultimately, the user should also understand when they are practicing what is happening to their field or their crop or what result they are getting. So, do we have some standards where they can map all this or do they think like a miracle that is happening? So, it is not a miracle, it is science. So, biochar is like coral reef and uh, biochar is like a rechargeable battery for the soil. I am using some common jargon so that uh, it is understandable for everybody. And uh, crop residue is yes, definitely it can become a source for creating biochar as well as to recharge biochar. So, we need the food for biochar also so that other life can exist there. And all these practices are happening in the open system. So, lab to land when we say lab is completely different where the universities, institutions or higher level organizations they can have some systems and these are very costly actually. So, land means ultimately when we have really adopted and uh, I am always uh, puzzled when we are defining a biochar of the highest quality, this much carbon should be there, it should be at this temperature, it should be like this, perfect. But when you are applying in the soil, that is a miniscule and your soil is not the perfect soil anyhow, it is the most polluted nowadays. So, when you are putting this much highest quality biochar in that soil, what is happening there matters more than the source of your biochar. So, this consciousness uh, should be there. Then optimum application standards also we had to evolve. Otherwise, the people with money, they say 10 tons, 1 ton, 100 tons, whatever they want they use. Uh, and uh, they tell, but uh, it, it is not a one time application by a church. The things have changed since several years and we need to change. So, it is a slow process, incremental application is also suggestible. So, these things need to be evolved and uh, uh, then uh, it is also process related thing, by a church is not the end actually. So, when it is applied, its interaction with various other things and uh, we need to, it is a community adaptation and socio-ecological issues are there, even carbon sequestration, climate change, many things are there. So, it is a integrated science actually. That is why probably somewhere within agriculture, the charcoal jargon was missing in the textbooks up to university till recently, maybe now they have incorporated. But uh, it is an again it is an integrated science involving community scientists, soil scientists especially including precision agriculture because when we apply this at a point and because it is going to stay there for say a thousand or ten thousand years or even more at least part of it then uh, definitely have to map it and uh, fix it. So, applying uh, the GIS remote sensing and all these things will come into picture. And uh, ultimately what I say is uh, there are multiple users actually, soil is the ultimate thing, whether we cremate a body, ultimately your charcoal and ash are going to reach the same soil or I created a just Buddha biochar, ultimately where it will go, it will go to the soil, I have done biochar bricks uh, used in the construction, where that will go, someday it will go to the soil. So, finally it is ending in the soil. So, recharge, reuse, recycle. These concepts also we should understand in the context of biochar. 
then uh, like applications many farmers will ask me i am going for plantation already i planted where i should apply see you take the medicine inside and you should just apply on the face because where your roots are so deep in plantations you are supposed to begin your process of application right from the pit treatment also you are not done that it's okay outside also it will work so point application line application or area application these are very things even mulch as a mulch also we can apply recently somebody was telling my mango plantations are having some termite problem i said apply the paste as paint the biochar paint to the plant it will repel them so like that simple solutions are also there including uh, some of the exclusive applications like you can create a like in poly houses high end farming you can create exclusive beds the media biochar is the media for cultivation like rooftop garden or even hydroponics you can integrate in many things so these things are already there even vertical gardens even fertigation the jargon i have given where you can cultivate crops on the water using the biochar so like this we have amping uh, things so when i started in 2005 the biochar in india there were very few uh, universities abroad they were working in india it has not started much is to call terra preta it's a long journey but my uh, testing was from the field level only we observing the height of the plant the number of flowers how many seeds they germinated and the depth of the plant even uprooted few plants and saw the roots how they are or rhizobium how it is there so all these are uh, observations which are very much evidence based and even a person who is applying can perceive and see by himself uh, this mattered the most for me uh, to be a successful uh, in this uh, initiative on biochar i written a book called biochar culture i don't want to just call biochar like agriculture horticulture everywhere it is culture so this is also culture so it's an integrated approach so there are amping blends that we can adopt and reduce the cost of biochar also thank you very much thank you very much